I think that uh, the two the two together is is an interesting combination. Um, the report that we had was 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 a complete distortion of the facts um, by George Cuff uh, and the minister. Minister Schultz was dropped into this uh, mess that was created by the previous minister, Minister McIver. Um, the process is a process that the that the uh, province uses um, to go through and in investigate uh, to investigate, I guess, concerns they may have with a with a municipality. Uh, in our situation, what was what was uh, apparent and frustrating for us was the inability to really look into some of the allegations that they were making. Um, they weren't willing to share information with us. Um, they weren't willing to share any evidence with us. So a lot of this information that you're seeing for the first time, um, we're seeing for the first time. And so, you know, that that's that's quite concerning because usually in any kind of a, a process, you want to get holistic answers to everything. You want to get both sides so you can ideally, in an investigation, so ideally you can end up going down the right road. Uh, and you know, it was it was just a weird process that we had to go through, um, and for the right reasons, it's important that that natural justice happens, and it's important that um, disclosure and 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 full ability to identify what the real issues are, and both sides get to communicate. Um, it has to be fair. No, no, the experience with George Cuff wasn't fair. George Cuff only let us look at. Uh, our side. So if we, if he asked us a question about something, we, we only provided that answer. We never knew what was on the other side. So what were we being accused of? We were never shown what we were being accused of. And you're like, well, why wouldn't we want to know? Why wouldn't you want us to know so we could answer questions? Um, if there is some concern or some uh, lack of clarity, we could provide those answers to clarify the situation. Um, there's nothing wrong with transparency. In fact, I believe transparency in government is really key. Um, when we came into this, we known that there was there was a lot of history in Chestermere where there was a lot of uncertainty in its governance. Um, for many years, um, there's been a lot of distrust about government. I've been here in Chestermere for about 22 years, just over, and um, during that process, there was a lot of things that happened that m many of the residents just lost trust in the government. I thought the directives for Minister Schultz were reasonably straightforward. Our, um, in a municipality, the types of directives she gave are, are typically what a municipality does anyways. And so it really, what it really looks to when you actually look into the, um, when you break down each one of those directives is that it really shows that there was nothing to the inspection. You know, and, and that's what we've been saying from the beginning. Um, these directives, for the most part, we've already been doing. Um, and we can go through some of those, for example. So in the procedural bylaw, for example, uh, obviously our municipality has a procedural bylaw. They've asked us to ensure that we um, add, add and amend for a rotating deputy mayor. And uh, we've already had that in our procedural bylaw before. So making sure that that happens and making sure that you hold that, uh, typically what we do is we vote on that every year for in council as to which one of our councillors will become the deputy mayor. So that's not something that um, is is really onerous for us to for that have to have that looked into. Yeah, the Tri CAO model um, and the Strategic Advisory Group we call it the SAG Group um, was really an 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 explo exploration into how can we make council have. Um, that, that additional help to govern uh, when a lot of councillors come into, uh, into government without having previous experience. And so um, really that group is really meant for that. Now the strategic, sorry, this Tri-CAO model, um, what that's meant to do is that we, in the very beginning we looked at having one gatekeeper um, we thought really doesn't speak to transparency and providing a full transfer of information to council. And so we elected to vote on and bring in a tri-CAO model. And during our tri-CAO model, um, we had legal opinions that were drawn up. We had to do the amendments to the bylaw that all of this follows the MGA as, as Minister Schultz spoke of. 
that we did do that. And so they've asked us to get another legal opinion on it, which is fine. We've already had two legal opinions on them. So we're fully comfortable with, with proceeding with that. Um, and we believe it'll show that it's set up the correct structurally and it's set up uh, in the right manner. The, the code of conduct portion of, of the directives that Minister Schultz provided um, really is, is an area that we feel quite comfortable with. Um, approximately in our third month, our council felt that it was important to put forward an initiative to have a third party inspector. Uh, now, when we did that, uh, we had some of our councillors not agree with doing that, but I felt it was important that an independent third-party inspector that's going to review codes of conduct that be brought forward is very key. So, Minister Schultz bringing this into a directive is something we've already, we're already doing. Um, so, they've asked us to come forward with that again, which is, that's very easy for us to comply with. No, our, what we were shocked about with our council is that we get along very well in, in council. And so we have approximately a 98.7% um, unanimous or evenly distributed voting. Uh, the only time we've seen this block voting is, is just over 1.3% of the time. And um, of that, uh, you know, it, it really contends to we're not supposed to agree on everything. Uh, there's going to be difference of opinions um, and whatnot. What we were, what we consider more of the block side of things is that we found out afterwards. Uh, we found out halfway through our 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 first year that some of our councillors were going behind our backs and saying things that we didn't know about. Um, so we didn't know about the fact that there was dysfunction um, until we were made aware of it uh, and it got brought forward uh, in the middle of the invest inspection. mediation uh, that again another directive by Minister Schultz is uh, is is not a bad thing at all our council passed a motion um, a couple months ago to actually bring mediation forward for our council um, all of our council and uh, that's that to me that's a good thing that you should do in any organization anyways to make sure you're doing mediation team building etc um, and try and bring things forward on a more collegiate more collegial basis Yeah, so that's another point um, that, that kind of shows that um, these directives are are really what we've our city and our municipality has already been doing. Um, so we started with our strategic plan when we first started in uh, in council. Uh, we worked on that with uh, some consultants that were providing us with some guidance. Um, and what was interesting is looking at that strategic plan now and working through with what we believed before we were really had any experience in office and then where we are today um, has really helped us hone in on what really we want to try and accomplish and what um, what what types of things are uh, doable in certain time frames um, and so we've we've already established a motion in our council previously that is to establish uh, the completion of our strategic plan so again that directive is something that we're very easily for us to, to comply with Yeah, so, so again, the minister has asked us to, as one of the directives, is to complete our audit and to get an additional auditor. So we had a previous auditor, KPMG, and their contract was up. Um, they've been with the city for five years. So their contract expired in on the fifth year this year. And so it's already something that we've been in place for, putting in together an RFP, which is a request for proposal. Um, and allowing other accounting firms to come forward to us. So it was, it was a little bit odd when KPMG decided to resign at the same time that their contract was up. Um, but, you know, that, that's, that's their prerogative. Um, we had some concerns about some of the financials that were coming out, and they had some concerns about that. And so it was just good to move to a new auditor so that these concerns are fully vetted. For sure. Um, we've already had numerous uh, large auditing firms reach out to us that have uh, been interested in doing audits for the city. Um, and, and again, the 2021 was, was already done. 
So this this audit of 2021 and finishing it, they still have to go through it and, and check it and, and make sure it's, it's accurate. But um, from a work perspective, a lot of it has already been completed. And so the city and, all the, st and the staff have been working on the 2022 audit. Um, so we expect to have them come through both uh, quickly. So we'll definitely be meeting the targets. I've been here 22, just over 22 years. Um, and our city, when I first got here, is, you know, it's surprising how many residents it was. It was just over 2,500, I believe. So quite a bit different um, than it is today. But as the city's grown, uh, we've, we've found for, I guess, the last, I don't know, 15 years, we've had a lot of distrust uh, with our government um, in, in Chestermere. And um, that's been something, that's one of the reasons I decided to run, is that some of the things that I noticed, the challenges we were having with our utility C CUI, uh, was, was things that we shouldn't be having. Um, and I wanted to make sure that, you know, some of these construction things that we were doing and utility things that we were doing, these, these things need to be more transparent. And they were, they were not. And so this is one of the reasons why I decided to run, was to make sure we got this transparency, bring that back into government. As well, I noticed during the time period um, when CUI was rolled out, our utility rates went crazy. Uh, at the same time, so did our tax rates. You know, our, my taxes personally tripled. And I've never ever heard such a thing happening in other jurisdictions. Um, and to me, that just speaks volumes of something's wrong. And we want to get back to what we had before. Um, we had a good level of service before. I never complained about what the level of service the city was providing. And, and before I did trust the government. Um, and then after all that kind of stuff started to happen, there was a lot of distrust. And so that's one thing that we want to try and rebuild, um, and that's one of our main focuses. So in regards to, in regards to trying to reach these directives that, that Municipal Affairs has provided with us, we honestly don't believe that's a trouble at all. Um, because again, if you read between the lines and what you're seeing with what they said, this is stuff we're already doing. So it's, it's really, really speaks volumes of the inspection itself. The city hasn't done, um, there's only one land sale that the city's been involved in, um, which is what we used to call Webster Lands, which is now a Serenity project. Uh, and that, that particular deal uh, has been, you know, a bit of a black guy for Chestermere for many years. Uh, it was bought for way too expensive, um, and they spent a ton of money trying to bring services to it, and it's still not fully serviced. Um, so it, it, it really was a challenging location. It was located on the southeast corner of, of Chestermere, which is kind of in the middle between Highway 1 and, and Glenmore Trail. So it really made no sense for it to be a, a, a heavy industrial, light industrial uh, development because you're too far away from transportation routes. Um, so when, that is the only deal that the city had looked into uh, while we've been in, our, um, in office. And so in early, early January 2022, uh, we brought forward a, a purchase agreement that we had been working on and that had come to council um, through a number of times about the possible sale of the Webster lands um, to the Serenity Group. And that particular land uh, had a motion that was put um, in, I think it was January 4th, if I'm not mistaken, to have that was passed unanimously um, by all of council that we agreed to the purchase agreement uh, and the sale of Webster Lands. So that had been brought forward to to the inspector Cuff, um, and in our in our draft inspection agreement, that was seemed to be um, suffice. And so I'm kind of surprised that it's into the into this final um, document because uh, that's been fully explained and it was done done appropriately. So what, what's commonly referred to as a land swap is we were looking at um, 11 acres over on the east side of town by Camp Chestermere in, in the Kinnenberg area. And it's a, it's a great piece of land if it, would, if it could be maintained as recreation um, for that community. Uh, whether, it be, whether it be used partially by Camp Chestermere or whether it be used um, for the Kinnenberg area right beside the school um, where the soccer fields are. So it's a great location for recreation lands. Um, and what had happened is in the last council, they had approved that they'd swapped that land from recreation um, use to a development of some condominiums and some uh, villas. 
And so it wasn't very popular. <laughs> and, and I agreed with that. I didn't think it was a good idea. I think there's lots of places to go develop. Um, there's very few areas that are large, which are for recreation. And so what, we had, what, what I had looked into is, is, could this land be swapped with other land that the city might own? And so what we were looking into it, um, uh, this is back over a year ago, was the potential of swapping some of the land at Webster for some of this land at, um, at the, these 11 acres uh, behind by, by Camp Chestermere. But that deal has, has never been papered, has never been done yet. Um, the developers are, are interested in doing it. They've given us documentation saying that um, they like the idea of it because they see the value of what's happening at uh, Serenity and Webster. So um, we're looking forward to move forward with that development or that swap so that we can get this recreation that's so badly needed for the Kinnenberg area and those families in that area. Um, but that hasn't happened to date. So there is no contracts. There's no completed deal. So I don't think it has anything to do with that, but that's just the status of where that's at. Yeah, it's, it's, again, I'm new to politics, so, um, you know, this, this whole concept of fake news is something that I haven't really been a part of. I mean, when I was growing up, I always thought the news told the truth, and, you know, that's the way it worked. Um, but having get in, gotten into politics now, I realize I'm more familiar, or more, more uh, abreast of the fact that the key information, they, how, distort, how much they distort it. And I, I guess it sells papers. Um, you know, this, I think they call it clickbait. Um, and and it's, it's really too bad because our, our small community, um, you know, likes to be, is, is a very special place. We, you know, we have this beautiful resort style community that we're trying to work on to bring more amenities, more recreation, um, keep all of our crime down and keep everything positive up. Um, and that's been our focus and, and really to, to plan our growth with our, you know, developments of a retail, commercial, tax base, et cetera. And so that's been, that's been our entire focus of doing that. So I, it's a shame that, that com companies that or papers, media papers, have decided to make that uh, something they want to try and distort. Um, I don't really know why, but it's, it's frustrating. Uh, so we're trying to come up with a way to let the information come out and make sure that the residents get the truth uh, instead of what people want to pervert. George Cuff, um, yeah, the, the report that he did was, was unfortunate. Um, most of his report uh, was really hearsay. And so we were critical of the fact that, are we going to get the opportunity to see this evidence? Because you're claiming this stuff. Um, well, it never happened. We have no information about that. And you're not willing to show us evidence of it happening? Well, how do you want us to answer to that besides, no, it didn't happen? Um, and so it's, it's very weird the way that the government and slash George Cuff has, has approached this. Uh, because usually you'd want to show, you're, you're entitled to see what you're being accused of. Uh, and then provide evidence that it's incorrect or provide evidence that, that, that's to the contrary. But with George, he, he wasn't willing to provide anything. And you're, that was really odd. Um, and it was more, it turned out to be a bit more of an opinion piece that uh, he, he didn't like things or didn't like this. And it's like... Sorry, does that, is that contrary to the MGA? Is that contrary to something that um, is written down that we're allowed to do? Because we're very good at researching things. And we're very good at reading and reading the MGA and getting our legal opinions. You're allowed to do all of this, so we do that. And that's why all of the stuff we've done was shown by uh, the Minister of, Mi of Municipal Affairs that it was done correctly. So it's, it's quite telling when you see George Cuff going, saying something off about that and, and using a bunch of hearsay conversations that may have happened or may not have happened. Were any of these people under oath? No. I've never experienced where you're taking evidence from people that's not under oath and you're going to take it verbatim as accurate. So these things are important. So it's unfortunate that he did the inspection the way he did. Um, I think there would have been a real unique opportunity to really have gotten to the bottom of of some of the, the ideas of, of our residents that, that are concerned about how the government is operating. Um, because all we want to do and all we want to be is transparent. And so what's happened with that is providing more transparency has made some people, certain people, uncomfortable. And that's not my problem. Um, transparency, in my opinion, is the way to go. And honesty. And honesty. Honesty is extremely important. So we're trying to make sure that 
that all of our residents are able to see everything. And, and coming forward with um, some of the uh, requirements for the minister's um, directives is that we're going to try and show these all in public so people can see all of the details of what we're talking about. So they'll be able to see, wow, that's what was actually the truth as opposed to what was written in the inspection. And so when you provide evidence, it's obvious. And so, you know, the inspection report is, is just a fictional document. One of the biggest attractions of Chestermere is it's a collection of people. And uh, we've, we've got a great um, cross-section of, of different communities, different people with different backgrounds from different parts of the world. And, and it, makes, it makes Chestermere a really strong place. Um, and what I noticed when I was campaigning uh, and when I've been talking to uh, residents is that we all have the same core values though, is that we're really concerned about the safety and protection of our family our kids and our family. We want to make sure that our families grow up with success and that our kids succeed. And so that's really important and that really strikes home because that is one of the biggest things that I believe as well for my family. Um, and we want to make sure that this safe environment uh, endorses and supports how people can come forward with their individuality, how they can come forward with their natural ideas, how they can explore you know from Chestermere is a really active community so there's so many things for to do here and we want to continue to offer those kinds of activities as opposed to places that you know you're not allowed to don't don't walk over here don't walk over there don't ride off highway vehicles you know that's been a great addition to our community that's honestly been here for ever right 50 plus years right and that's that's really what Chestermere is about and that's one of the reasons I gravitated to Chestermere was to this type of lifestyle and this this close-knit community and this this security and safety for your family so we're going to continue to enhance that and focus on that well for the next six months we want to make sure that we've we've are answering uh, residents questions um, they've got some they've got obvious concerns about some of the report that came out with uh, with cuff as well as uh, they might not understand exactly what the initiatives are directives are by the minister uh, and it's easy for us to go through those one by one so they can see, oh, okay, you're, you're already, you've already done that or you've, you're doing that. Um, and, and then secondly, is to not have that necessarily impact operations of government. One thing we worked hard with was coming in here into the city and, and really trying to make it more efficient um, and more effective. Uh, we wanted to bring more expertise into the city and make sure that we were firing on all cylinders because it was pretty evident that none of our numbers were matching. None of our numbers were matching other municipalities. We were over in all the wrong areas. And so we wanted to take a look and how to restructure that. And so we've worked hard at doing that. And we've got some incredible people now that are really working hard. People that have been sheltered and are now growing. It was, you know, it's incredible to see some of the people, how they've stepped up. Um, and so, so with that, we want to try and make this, make this city very efficient, um, but at the same time accomplish the goals that the citizens want. And so right now our citizens have, have indicated that they really want to make sure we, we add more schools, that we add more recreation, that we get our developers to fund things properly, build roads properly, not have to come back after. Um, so this has been something that, that we're really keenly focused on to going forward and, and not trying to you know, raise taxes and et cetera to do that, but to find new revenue streams, to explore our, our commercial uh, base that we should be expanding. And so... Yeah, there's a lot of work ahead, but but this is why we all signed up. You know, we're we're very enthusiastic about this. Um, it's it's challenging sometimes to communicate the message directly to the public, um, but that's something that we've got to get better at, and that we're going to continue to try to improve at. Yeah, I think that um, I think that our four I think our four councillors and our three councillors that are in our split. Uh, honestly, we don't see it that way when we're in council. Um, I know that it gets played up in the public and, and in the media, but um, we have smart counselors uh, and on both sides. And again, it's not two sides, it's really one. And so um, we have a lot of different experiences and different expertise. And so they all lend all the time, but then there's obviously some people with more experience in different areas. And so it's really important to surround yourself with experts. And I'm we're pretty lucky that the people that we have, all of us, all six of the councillors and myself, really have good backgrounds uh, in depth, um, a lot of business experience and plus a lot of social experience. 
uh, which I think is you know really what a city's about. We have, we always have to watch our pennies, but at the same time we're also trying to support various social initiatives, and. Uh, you know, that's, I really feel we have the right group to do that. Um, we got off on the wrong foot with, with them. Uh, I don't know why, actually, but I think some of that is we're willing to explore the reasons why and try and figure out that with, uh, with assistance through mediation, et cetera, um, um, or a coach, and, um, and really go from there. But, but as I said, when we're in council, we, we hear and respect each other's opinions, and, they, and everyone provides good good thought and provoking conversation so um, but I'm looking at improving that and so I think it's a good thing for us to continue to figure out how to work better together and how to be more efficient and effective as well it's not just the staff it's also us we've got to we've got to stand up as well